Okay, um, next uh, we have Xu In Wang coming up to talk about progress in perennial wheat and introduce uh, a new postdoc to the Land Institute. So, Xu Wen. Uh, morning, uh, everyone. Uh, our perennial wheat uh, pro uh, program uh, started in 2001. Uh, uh, before that, there's a lot of perennial wheat uh, cultivars or breeding lines have been developed by other, you see, breeding group. Uh, other you see, uh, uh, breeding uh, programs. Uh, regular you see, perennial wheat look very similar to annual wheat. Uh, the elite lines uh, yield uh, about 50 to 70 percent that of annual uh, wheat cultivars. But uh, the perennial issue has troubled as uh, researchers for decades. Because uh, you see, perennial those uh, those uh, you see perennial wheat lines, you see uh, the performance vary from year to year. Uh, from uh, the very beginning, you see, we uh, put the improvement in uh, perenniality above all the other uh, goals because we believe uh, without the ability to for perennial wheat to live in the field for many years, it's uh, impossible to fully realize the ecological or e economical use benefits of perennial wheat. Uh, through years of experiments, we have found it's possible to have non-lived perennial wheat in our field. Uh, a rare old use perennial wheat lines called MD2 has little problem to uh, live in our field for more than two years. Uh, back in 2011, we made some new crosses between uh, winter durum wheat and uh, intermediate wheat grass. This year we have had 66 plots of plants, or you see hundreds of plants that have survived the whole summer. Um, so it's possible to have a uh, non-lived perennial wheat in our field. Uh, our collaboration with other researchers uh, is uh, expanding over time. Uh, last month, we sent 20 perennial wheat lines to collaborators in nine countries. Uh, six, uh, five uh, breeding lines uh, are developed by our breeding program. Uh, in this uh, new trial, uh, uh, perennialty issue will be investigated in more, dep uh, in more uh, depth from uh, the perspective of flying time genes. Uh, also, other traits uh, such as cold tolerance, uh, disease uh, resistance, and the forage uh, production uh, will be uh, investigated. Uh, uh, also, in this, uh, you see a new trial, uh, perennial rye and uh, perennial barley will be tested together with perennial wheat for the first time. Um, uh, just uh, about two years ago, uh, we uh, realized uh, the a real problem in perennial wheat is because of the regrowth habit. I better use a bring uh, use plants to show you. Nearly all the perennial wheat, uh, you see, uh, behave like this. Uh, the problem start from the second year. The second year, the new tillers just keep flying in the summer, in the fall, until the cold winter kill, you see, uh, these tillers. So, uh, so right now we are collaborating with. Uh, uh, Oklahoma State University, uh, Max Planck uh, Institute for, plan, uh, for uh, Plant Breeding in Germany, and uh, Northwest Agriculture and Forestry University in China to uh, find a solution to solve this problem. We have uh, crossed, uh, in, uh, in this plant, you see, we speculate uh, that a wheat gene called uh, VIN1 is the problem. So we have crossed, uh, with, uh, crossed with, uh, crossed, uh, 
with the wheat grass, use uh, two uh, wheat materials that differ only in that gene, VIN1. In this plant, uh, the VIN1 gene is working. Can you see uh, these tillers have elongated and ready to flower, just like that, the first plant that I have shown you. So you can see, uh, you see uh, we, uh, because we uh, decrease uh, the, the, the temperature to the range of uh, 60 to uh, 70, it's not so cold. But these Latinas has killed, has been killed, has, uh, you see, severely, you see, damaged. In this uh, plant, the gene, the VIN gene, is not uh, working. You can see uh, it stays, you see, uh, dormant, stay dormant. So we think this is the key to solve the real problem <coughs> in perennial wheat. The real problem is not in regrowth, it's in regrowth habit. Uh, so uh, I, uh, uh, I think you see, uh, right now you see more and more uh, uh, pre uh, researchers are working on perennial wheat. I think uh, the genetics of perennialty issue is uh, much clearer than ever before. Uh, I'm confident, you see, we will have true perennial wheat that in the field uh, not far away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so next, uh, you see, please allow me to uh, introduce uh, Catherine Turner. Uh, she joined the uh, perennial wheat program in June. Uh, she uh, got a PhD, uh, master and a PhD, a PhD uh, a doctor degree from uh, University of Minnesota. Uh, she worked on disease resistance uh, of perennial wheat for her master degree. Also, uh, when uh, in her uh, PhD program, we spent some time uh, on uh, the, in the first international, you see, uh, GBI trial. Um, actually, you see, uh, you, ha you, you had uh, the first uh, collection with the management as early as in 2005 as an uh, uh, intern. We uh, welcome uh, her to come back uh, <laughs> and believe uh, uh, her uh, participation will bring our UC work to uh, UC a new level. Okay, so. Thank you.